Hi, I'm Fabs, and today I'm going to show you the basic hand stitches to use in doll making. Let's start with back stitch. Back stitch is an extremely strong stitch to use. I personally use this only when I'm hand sewing the wig caps to the doll's head. This is mainly the only time when I would use back stitch in doll making. You could also use this stitch if you were hand sewing the entire doll. Now let's see ladder stitch. Ladder stitch is the most useful stitch to learn and use in your doll making adventures. This stitch creates small steps that look like a ladder, therefore the name. You can pull on them as you go or you can make a few stitches and then pull and cinch the thread to close the stitches nice and tight. Ladder stitch makes a very strong and tight seam that joins the pieces together while you can't see the stitches. It is the hand stitch I highly recommend in all of my doll making patterns. When you're making the seam along the neck, joining the fabric from the torso to the fabric on the head, you make a little stitch at the bottom and then a stitch at the top. The thing to pay attention here is to make them even and at the same level. Always piercing with the needle immediately above or below where the thread is sitting. This will create a very even seam. My process for this next seam is to make a row of stitches of medium length, then a second seam with even smaller stitches. If the seam doesn't look to my liking, then I can do a third seam. Ladder stitch is also the stitch you would use when you're sewing little feet up, like in the wee baby or the little fake pattern. You pin the little feet up, joining them to the leg, and then you use two rows of ladder stitch to secure them in this position, allowing your doll to have a bit more shapely feet. This is what it looks like once the little feet are all sewn up. Now let's see whip stitch. Whip stitch is also a very helpful stitch to use to close shoulders and sewing up the neck. Because of the awkward area here, I find that whip stitch is the easier stitch to use when closing the fabric at this part of the doll making process. With whip stitch, you can see the stitches. You see little whips going from one stitch to the next because the thread is sitting atop the seam. So you have to be very mindful and make them tidy and small. Whip stitch is very similar to slip stitch, except the way you bring the nail in and out of the fabric is a little bit different so you don't see the whip of the thread. I shall show you how to make slip stitch a little later on in the video. If you make your whip stitches small and neat, the seam looks very pretty. I don't use whip stitch to join body parts, I use whip stitch to close seams, like the shoulders. If I'm joining body parts, like the legs and arms to the torso or the neck seam, then I always use ladder stitch. Here you can see those little whips of thread going from one stitch to the next. Make sure your seam allowances are lying flat so you don't create a very visible or deeply felt ridge along the seam. <music> 
invisible back stitch. This is a little more cumbersome stitch, so that's why I don't normally use it, but it's the strongest, also invisible, and it creates an extremely flat seam. So you make a stitch on the head going back, then you come down right below it and you go a little bit ahead of where you were before. You move one stitch ahead. Then you go back again on the head side. You come down back right below on the next side and then you move forward one stitch ahead of where you were. So effectively on the neck part you're making double length stitches and on the head part you're making the regular stitch length. You're back stitching but making those stitches hidden inside the neck seam. This is the length of my regular stitch so I need to come out in front of it, doubling the length. And then I'm going to make a stitch back on the head part. You can use pins so that you know where you are at each point in the sewing process if you're a little bit confused of where everything is. Eventually though your hands have a feel for where everything is. This is an extremely strong stitch that normally only requires one row of stitches and it produces a very neat and flat seam at the neck. I do enjoy making this stitch, but I'm more inclined to use two to three rows of ladder stitch instead. It gives me a greater feeling of security and faith in those seams, and I also make the second or third row of ladder stitch very, very small. The result is almost the same as invisible backstitch. So here's a little bit clearer view about the process for these hand stitches, starting with ladder stitch. You make one stitch below and then one stitch above, keeping both at the same length, always coming in and out at the same spots where your thread pops up. I'm using a contrasting thread here so you can see how these stitches are made. Here is the underside of the seam. Ladder stitch is one of my favorite hand stitches. Here is the process for slip stitch. It's just a little different than whip stitch because in this case you're sinking the stitch right beneath the fall, so effectively the whip part is hidden in the seam. This is a very helpful stitch to use for when you're attaching hats to baby dolls like the wee baby or doing hems on doll clothing or sewing bias tape to a neckline for example. It allows you to have very tiny stitches on the underside and the majority of the thread gets hidden in the fold of the seam. This is what the seam looks like on the underside. Slip stitch is also one of my favorite hand stitches to use. 
let's go over the procedure for backstitch. We will also help you understand invisible backstitch. Backstitch is the strongest as you're replicating the stitch over and over, but like I mentioned before, I mostly use it when sewing doll wigs to the doll's heads. Occasionally, I use the invisible backstitch on doll neck. You go back and then you make a double length stitch going forward and then you go back and then you go again forward. For the people that hand stitch the entire doll, this is the stitch they are most likely to use as it creates very strong seams and once you turn the body pieces right side out, you need a strong seam to hold it against all the stuffing you will be doing. So that's it. I hope this video helps you sew better and prettier seams so that you can make better and prettier dolls. If you like this video and want to encourage me to produce more like this, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to watch upcoming videos. If you are definitely interested in doll making, I also have a Patreon channel where I share monthly tutorials on doll clothing and creative doll making techniques. I hope you can join us. Thank you so much for watching.